Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday live stream. Thank you for showing up on Sunday. We got a lot of things to go over, and I want to get to the Q and A. So let's just jump right in and get into it. So uh, today is a pretty another great day. If you're a Bitcoin crypto holder, looks like uh, Bitcoin actually hit 70k around 6 a.m. this morning, somewhere around there, 70,008. 0.55, and uh, this was at 0600 or 0625 a.m. in the morning. And of course, once that happens, everybody has their uh, limit order set, sell orders are set, and people start to uh, take profits, which seems like 70K is just a little bit of resistance. Maybe 69K is actually going to be the support. But you're going to see that we kind of dropped off a little bit. Not a big deal, but uh, that's uh, looking pretty good. And what I like about uh, what's going on right now, this is a good time because <clears throat> we already did the hard stuff. Already got through the uh, the bear market. We dollar cost average. We did what we were supposed to do. Now it's just living on easy street, essentially. Look at this. Look over seven days. Look over a month. Look over three months. Look over a year. And of course, we max out. Looking pretty good. I'm liking where we're going. But today, what I want to talk about is probably one of the the easiest ways for us to orange pill people. And this is, uh, if you don't know, this is Larry Fink. He's the uh, head of BlackRock. And of course, they're crushing it right now with their Bitcoin ETF of iShares or iBit. And uh, he was on Fox News. This was a couple of days ago. I want to share this, but a couple of things kept uh, popping up. And I just wanted to go over about what he said. And, and it's, it's, it's a good way to, to get into the conversation with Bitcoin. But I think like as we go through this, I want to share an example of uh, what I just did this morning and talking to some people that are actually came over here to uh, Puerto Rico, some friends of mine. And we were talking about Bitcoin, about just how to like orange pill people, essentially. This is a great start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you listen to this about a minute or so. <clears throat> Excuse me, listen to, listen to Larry talk and uh, tell me what you think. Not a bad idea. <clears throat> that there's a lot of merit to it. There's a lot of opportunity. It is a great store, and this is where you can debate. Is it a good store? Do you know how it's made? A bunch of computers figure out. But there's problems. only. But the issue is, if there, if people believe that it can be a, an asset that can be cross border, right. and let's be clear, if you're in a country where you're fearful of your government, and maybe this is one of the reasons why China has banned it. Mm -hmm. If you're in a government where you're, if you're in a country where you're fearful of your future, fearful of your right. government, or you're frightened that your government is devaluing its currency by too much deficits. Like us. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> go to the little elephant in the room here. Yeah. <laughs> you could say this is a great potential long-term store of value. And it, as I said, it's like digital gold. And I, and I believe... But you still can't buy a slice of pizza with it. Isn't it, that kind it, of odd no, that we're... But you can't buy a, a price of pizza with palladium or or gold. No, but nah. there you can do stuff with them. I can get stuff with... I mean, people use gold for, for stuff, right? But you, you, people, you could buy and sell your Bitcoin. No different than gold. So it, it is very... What is it? But gold is put in, like... Jewelry. Jewelry. And, and, and you know, iPhones, I think there's... there's In some electronics, there's it's gold. More, more silver, silver. and but, but you see what I'm saying. It's mm. There are practical uses... Bitcoin, it's literally a ledger. <clears throat> it is a ledger, and but it's a international ledger. It's cross border. It it over it's it's bigger than any government. I see. I agree with you. It it, it would have blown up, I believe, in FTX, and it didn't after FTX. Ah, da, 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 da. So yeah. You know, it's a, it's a good point, and I like the way that Larry put that out there. And I even said this. I go, look, Larry did his homework, and he did. He got orange-pilled by some of the best people out there because, I mean, when you're the head of an ass of uh, one of the largest institutions for, as far as assets under management of uh, roughly 10 trillion AUM, you're going to get some pretty good information. And I said, you know, if everyone knew this about Bitcoin and really understood it, Bitcoin would be a million to 50 million valuation for Bitcoin. I know that's a little bit crazy. And of course, that's a crazy price prediction. I'm not a big fan of those. But I did put it out there. If everybody knew that about Bitcoin, they'd be like, what am I doing? What am I really doing here? But there's a couple of things that, to talk about. And that's, first of all, when you're trying to like talk to people, I'm not a big fan of orange pilling people anymore. Because like, if you don't get it now, you know, I, I kind of feel like, you need to ask me because I'm not going to I'm not going to really try to drill it into you. Do whatever you want to. Right. But uh, I got some friends uh, from Texas. They came to stay, they stopped by and then uh, we were talking about some things. And 
like when you start talking about that aspect of Bitcoin, I know this is just a very small snippet, but when you start saying, you know, cross-border, cross-border payment is really good for other countries and things like that, you got to remember people are just, they they really are looking out for themselves. And that's really what it comes down to. It's like, okay, that's great. You know, that's great, but I don't really pay people in, you know, other countries right now. So what does this really do for me? So when I was taking a look at that, I just thought to myself, in all honesty, we really should be, first of all, Larry should have went there when he said, you know, when uh, uh, Gamarino, I forget the gentleman's name, who uh, is the host, he said, you know, oh, is this, are, are we talking about uh, in the inflation rates and, and the things that are going crazy with the United States? And Larry's like, no, I don't want to go there. He should have went there because that's the easiest way to do it, right? He should have talked about inflation. I think that's the easiest way to really orange pill somebody. And then when he talks about, can we, you know, we can't use Bitcoin to buy anything. We can't buy a pizza. Well, you can with Lightning. And I know people will say, hey, you can do this and that. Look, my friend Steven over at uh, uh, Taste of Smoke, the San Juan Smokehouse. He's got a little little barcode in there. that says, I take Bitcoin. Anybody who comes in there, and there's a lot of people that uh, for crypto and Bitcoin meetups, and they pay it all the time. And of course, they, you can you can get the finest medallias over there. And of course, you can do that. And then electricity, of course, if, you know, people are saying, well, there's, you know, too much electricity, you can get in that argument and say, well, you know, we can actually use the excess electricity, which will go to the miners, which will help to actually fund the whole ecosystem. And you can go down that route. But in all honesty, I just thought to myself, it's just easier to talk about inflation and then just go, look, uh, this is what it comes down to like this. If you realize that we're $34 trillion in debt, this is from the usdebtclock.org. I mean, you can show this to people, but it's not a big deal. Just, just remind everybody, like, you know, we're in massive debt, right? And it only goes up. And just so you know, if you're talking about people from the United States, like I usually do, just know that we're number one in debt. So, like, we're uh, double, more than double of what China, Japan, Germany, everybody else has as far as, like, debt. Mother, hold on real quick. Hold on real quick. Let me answer this. Jonathan? Yes, Roberto. Can you do me a favor? Yes, sir. Can you text before you call? Every time you call, I'm on a live, I'm on a live stream. I'm terrible. Yes. I'm sorry, Thank you. I, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Sorry about that. I get really... Uh. So here's the thing. So we're talking about uh, these, these little pieces. Inflation. It's the easiest way to talk about it, to really to kind of drive home the points of Bitcoin. So what I want to show you is this is Milton Friedman. And he was a uh, one of the great economists of the 1970s, 1980s. And when people start talking about inflation and all the different things that are you know going through and what's really driving the, the prices up, it's just money printing. It's just government. And this is one of my favorite talks that he had. So just listen to this. I love this piece. It's only 30 seconds long. Inflation is made in Washington because only Washington can create money. And any other attribution of, to other groups of inflation is wrong. Consumers don't produce it. Producers don't produce it. The trade unions don't produce it. Foreign sheiks don't produce it. Oil imports don't produce it. What produces it is too much government spending and too much government creation of money and nothing else. Inflation is made in Washington because only Washington can create money. And any other attribution of, to other groups of inflation is wrong. Consumers don't produce it. Producers don't produce it. The trade unions don't produce it. Foreign sheiks don't produce it. Oil imports don't produce it. What produces it is too much government spending and too much government creation of money and nothing else. Great. So it just makes things easy because what we're talking about today, uh, friends that said uh, actually come in, and we were talking about real estate. And they had talked about, uh, a friend of my wife said that uh, uh, her mom, lives in Florida, has a nice house, bought it in uh, roughly 1980 for $17,000. Right now, the valuation of that house is roughly half a million dollars. And we were talking about it, and she said, isn't that amazing about real estate? I said, yeah, it's great, and I love real estate, trust me. But I said, in all 
when we're talking about these these things, you got to understand that is it the valuation that went up from seventeen thousand to half a million, or was it because of a good amount of inflation? And she's like, "Wow, I really didn't really think about that." And so again, if you want to find a, a whole another piece of Milton Friedman and the whole video on inflation. There's uh, danteachescrypto.com. It's a free website. Go all the way down in module one. It's we talk about right here for about 10 minutes or so. But I want to show you is this, how eerie it is. We've talked about this many a time. And this one's about the M2 money supply. So essentially, just like Milton Friedman talked about, he said, look, he goes, it's only produced in one and one place only in government. And they print money and that's pretty much it. Now, of course, yes, the prices can go up by different corporations. Who can say, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna manipulate the markets and we're gonna push prices up, push prices up here and there. But it's not widespread like what quantitative easing and money printing actually does. And we can see back from the 1960s all the way up to 2020 and beyond. This overlay, this little blue part here, is the S&P 500. And it's amazing how like is the value of the of the stock market going up or is it just money printing? And then if we take a look over here, this is the consumer price index. And of course, when we take a look at this, when people say, you know, inflation is 3.1% or 2.9%, what they're saying essentially is this is year over year in a percentage base. So right now, of course, we were at gee, almost 9%. No, we were at 9% in 20, 2022. And just in January, we're at 3.11%. And what I wanted to show was, yes, it's great that we have all these different assets going up. And when we take a look at real estate itself, this right here is a CPI numbers going essentially up and to the right because inflation goes up because of money printing. The same thing with M2 money supply. This green line right here da, 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 is the average sale prices of houses sold in the US. And we're gonna see it's going up and to the right. There's a little bit of a dip uh, roughly around 2022 when uh, the market kind of went a little too hot and came back down. And then in the blue line, we've got the Zillow House Value Index. Let me blow this up so you can see it. And again, it goes up. It dropped off in the 2008-2009 Great Recession and to the right. So again, is it really about the valuation? Is it really going up or is it just inflation? So the question then is, is like this. Actually, let me show you this. Uh, let me show you, this is gold. Again, up into the right. And here's Bitcoin price. And even Bitcoin's not immune to M2 money supply and inflation. But the thing that I owe, we talked about this a couple of times. To make things super simple, that's what I want you to remember. If you're talking to your friends and family and you're, you're trying to orange pill them and you're saying, well, it's a decentralized ledger and cross-border payments and it's very good for electricity and, and we can do a lot of things. Just tell them this. Just go look. If you buy things, if you have Bitcoin as far as an asset, your cost will go down. And if you use some other things, your cost will still go up. And if I can just tell you one thing, take a look at real estate because that's kind of like the measure the measure of the American dream. Just remind them, when Bitcoin came out, it cost 64,000 Bitcoin to buy one house. And right now, you know how many Bitcoin it costs to buy a house? Six. That's all I gotta say. Inflation is everywhere. We're printing money like crazy. It cost 64,000 Bitcoin to buy a new house back in 2011. It now costs six. Oh, and oh yeah the price of houses have doubled. And that's it, that's all I wanted to say. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And to finish this up, oh, to finish this up, uh, Jerry Hall was supposed to be on today. And uh, unfortunately he got sick, but uh, he was at the AI conference in Panama. This was uh, last week and he had been posting some great things. He had over, he had, he had interviewed over 20 people. I think it was over 40 hours of, uh, or no, 20 people. And uh, roughly, he, he condensed it down to like a two-hour clip of what he's doing. And we were supposed to talk about the AI plays, but what he, was, what he wanted to talk about was this was the things that he thought were going to do really well. Hypercycle, Akash, Singularity, Fetch, Render, and BitTensor. So I uh, will have Jerry on when he's not so sick and explain to us why those. But I got to tell you, if we're taking a look at uh, some of these AI plays, man, in seven days, renders up 50%. BitTensor, eh, it took a little bit of a tumble, 6%. Fetch, 
Fetch AI, 49%. And this is the one that I watched a video on. Uh, guy over at Coin Bureau did it, and I took some profits, and I'm going to leave that one behind. But I am interested in Singularity, Akash, and then there's one more that caught my attention, AIOZ, as well as Hypercycle. So we'll get into that when Jerry's not so sick, and we'll go from there. And then also, if we're talking about uh, uh, altcoins, I want to say congratulations to everybody who got into Alvara Network. We had actually put a video on on our second channel over on Dan Degen. And that's, of course, the channel where it's like either you're going to make some good profits or you're going to go massively under. It's usually not in between. It's very risky plays. We talked about that. An Alvara protocol, we got in at uh, 30 cents and it peaked out at uh, 289. So that's almost a 10x in roughly 72 hours. So congratulations, everybody got into it. If you want to take a look at all my DGEN plays, there's a link in the description. And I show you all the things I've done since 20, wow, 2021 and 2024. And the new ones are Farcana, Ivanpay, Exporg, and Alvara. Uh, again, there's a, uh, in the description, if you scroll down, um, ba -ba 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 -ba, right here where it says 5% DGEN plays, that's the link to the spreadsheet. I don't like to go any more than 5% of DGEN plays because they're DGEN plays and they're just there for gambling. So uh, go from there. But then lastly, real quick, uh, I was wondering why Alvaro Protocol did so well, just so everybody knows. It looks like they just had a report out. There was uh, Alpha Transform was using, was using the Alvaro Protocol, which essentially is a DeFi hedge fund. And it uh, looks like it did pretty well. This was actually March. What's the date today? This was on Friday. So on March 8th, Alpha Artificial Index utilizes the 7621 built by Alvara. Index launched on January 1st, undergoes monthly rebalancing to maintain its relevancy and accuracy. And it looks like they used, they put 20 or 30 tokens in their DeFi hedge fund, essentially. They were selected for market cap, trading volume, and presence on reputable exchanges. Tokens had to have 20 million market cap, average daily trading volume, and be listed on tier one or tier two. That's the criteria. By the end of January, AI, AI had outpaced both equities and the broader crypto market. And this is all the things that they got into. And of course, it's an automatic rebalancer every 30 days. So it's pretty good. And again, this was a very risky play. I'm not going to say like this was a slam dunk. I even said that in the, um, in the deep dive. But Congratulations, everybody. Let's see how everything else does. Now we got to take a look at Exborg, Ivanpay, and Farcana, which Farcana is actually up, but it's only like a 6x, so not that great. Anyhow, that's it for today. So uh, try to be faster. Just didn't work out. Sorry. So everybody, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything to talk about is time sensitive.